Hello, fellow miners, and welcome to another episode from Spice Mines Gaming. Today we're going to update to a new snapshot, 19W06A. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of... Uh, major changes in this snapshot from what I could tell. Uh, there were some updates to the Wandering Villager. Uh, he now uh, drinks a potion of invisibility at night to avoid zombies and then drinks a bucket of milk in the morning to to be visible again. And then, um, then there was the splash screen, probably the most easily visible of the updates. And the new splash screen has a uh, progress bar, which is a really good visual cue when you're waiting for something to load. And then it kind of has this really nice fade to the main menu. It's really nice. I, I really like that. That was a good a good update. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead, get right in here. We're going to update. We're going to back up and load. And then we're going to get started with, um, with what we're going to do today. Uh, I've got some farming and mining right off the bat to take care of. And then I would also like to get to work on the house. I need to tear down what I have and then start building with the new materials and uh, I do need a mine for andesite I haven't between episodes I don't do anything with this series I only want to do work on the series while I'm recording and while you're with me here and so now we're we're in the world and the first thing I really need to do is uh, let's go check on the wheat see how that's doing and then um, let's do uh, breed some cows so we can get some more cows. And then after that, let's see, I, oh, I've got my wheat with me. Okay. And then after that, I would like to uh, start some mining. I need andesite. And do I have seeds here? No, no, I've been using all my seeds. Okay. Let's go down here to the wheat patch and um, see if we can spread this out. It looks like there's a lot of wheat ready to go. Which is a good thing because I bet these guys are getting hungry over here, being tied up in this pen. And maybe I'll lure. What is that? There's a dark. Sh That's an Enderman. Huh. Well, here we go. Here's our first mob visitor. So, okay, so the mobs can spawn on those blocks there. As you saw, that he was there. So we need to be careful with that. I do need to get a torch and put it over here just for that sake right there. And I'm going to grab a torch right here. And let's just put it right here for now. And check the light levels here on this side. It's a good thing I saw that. Because uh, that means creepers can be here. Okay, so we're good for the light. Okay. So yeah, creepers can be here. Now there's a drown coming. I'll just run away from here. I'm not going to worry about that. So it does look like we can get drowned off of the coast there and which makes sense because that's no longer the mushroom biome that is ocean over there so yeah those guys can those guys can spawn but that patch right there got that taken care of and I need to I guess I do need to go walk around and see if there's any more of those because I don't want creepers coming around over here but anyhow back to back to the game plan and I have some dirt I probably should have brought more dirt because I'm gonna need to expand uh, I'll just use the dirt that's here. Okay. Let's go ahead and take these up. The ones that are ready, at least. I don't want to take them up if they're not. There we go. Got all that. So let's get these seeds. Oh, wow. I got a lot of seeds. Okay. I saw some still floating around over there. I'll go get those here in a little bit as soon as I plant these and get them over to that side. Okay, I have lots of expansion to do here, so that's okay. And I have a shovel, so that is going to make this go a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and just dig up all of this. And put this back in here. And I, oh, I do have the hoe, good. And let's get these planted before it turns back into that mycelium stuff. There we go. Yeah, here we go. We're, this is expanding the farm, and that's, that's a good thing. Let's fill that in. This is going to make it 
a lot easier to feed the cows and get them bred up much quicker. That way I have lots of lots of wheat on hand. Okay. And then let's go this way. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here doing this, so I might go... Yeah, I'll just do this for now. I think this will be good to start off with. And you know, let's... Uh, whoop, I need to... Yeah, I lost that one. Let's just go ahead and dig that up and get this taken care of really quick. And while we're here, let's go ahead and try out this composter. Yeah, look at that. It's filling up. Cool. And normally I would have just thrown those seeds away. But now that we have these composters, that is going to be very, very handy. Okay, I got 30 wheat. That's quite a bit. Let's not put that in my hand yet. And we have three, four, five, six, seven cows. Uh, where's the nearest cow here? I don't want to go a long ways. You know what? Let's just go ahead and give these cows wheat and let them do their thing inside here. Okay, let's see if I can get two more. There we go. Okay. Herd expansion. <laughs> so expanded that, expanded that. Let's get into, let me go put up some of these blocks here. And then let's get down in the mine and go get some andesite so we can get started on this. I want to get this house at least moving here. And I'll go ahead and take this away so that I have room. And that one too. I'll hold on to that. And let's go ahead and hold on to these. I'll put that up, but I'll take a stack of dirt. That way I've got some filler block. Okay. Let's go ahead and go down here. And I only have... Oh, I have an iron pickaxe. Okay, cool. So I have that. Just in case I'd run into something like, uh, you know, red st redstone, lapis lazuli, those things you need to mine with um, an iron pickaxe. Okay, I've got torches on hand. And while I'm here, let's see. Are we still in the mushroom... Yeah, we're still in mushroom fields. As far as we could tell here. Okay, good. We're not going to worry about monsters yet. It'll be a matter of time. And then uh, we'll have some monsters in the area. Because once we leave this biome, then it's pretty much a, a like a free-for-all for the monsters to spawn. And now it's time for a torch. Let's get one put up here. Still not seeing any andesite, but... Again, that stuff is not rare. But while I'm mining, eh, some granite. Not pleased with that, but oh well. And while I'm mining, um, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do for uh, for like fun or for entertainment? And I've mentioned, you know, one thing in the previous episode uh, that I mentioned is um, I like to program, do some computer programming. And um, I've done that for quite some time uh, since basically my senior year of high school back in, here's some iron, back in the year, I can't remember if it was late 99 or early 2000. I can't remember which one that I got, I actually started learning about computer programming. And uh, either way, as I mentioned before, it was inspired by the video game Doom. Now, I learned that it was written by the programming language C, or written in the programming language C, and so that got me curious, and I wanted to do programming on my own. And at that time, I had no idea, you know, what it would take or what programming really was. I didn't know what it meant to learn a programming language, so... My curiosity got the best of me, and so I went to a store called CompUSA. I'm pretty sure they are long out of business by now. But um, they had a book section, and in that book section they had, uh, it was a Sam's Teach Yourself C++ in 21 Days. Now, Doom was written in C, but at that time CompUSA didn't have any C books in stock. They just had C++. 
So um, me not really knowing any better, I just grabbed the C++ book and took it home and started reading it, and I had no idea what I was reading. It was, there's some andesite right there. It was terminology beyond my understanding. So, you know, I had to get a, a dictionary to learn a few things, and I just started practicing. And that book was actually really good at, you know, absolute beginner programming. And so I had some computer knowledge before that, like I had assembled a PC, you know, get, getting the motherboard and the hard drive and the processor and the memory and all that and getting those things hooked up. I had done that before. So I had some general understanding of how computers work, but I did not understand as far as operating systems and computer programming. So um, make a long story short here. I'm kind of rambling a little bit. My apologies. But to make a long story short, I started working in C++ and I got decent at it. I was actually able, in high school, I took chemistry as, a, as an elective. And in that, elect, or in that class, we were doing some mathematical work. And so what I did was I wrote a C++ program to help me with my homework. And what the program would do is I could plug in the variables for some of the things that we were learning. Like we were learning like specific gravity and molecular mass and things like that. And what I could do with this program that I wrote, and it was just a really basic command line interface. There was no buttons or anything like that. It was just very basic. And what I could do with it is I could take the variables that I learned or that I had for the, the math problem, and then it would basically tell me if I got the answer right on paper. So I would do all the work on paper, and then I would plug in all the variables, and it would tell me if I got the answer correct. And so I showed my chemistry teacher this, just to show her that, you know, I am doing something like this. I'm not cheating, so I still have to do the work. And that was kind of the point. I wanted something that I could, you know, still learn the chemistry, but at the same time, it would help me with, you know, checking my answers at home. And so she really liked it, and she wanted me to give her a copy of this little program that I wrote. So I did that. And so that was just great encouragement for me to keep going. And I just kept learning more and more. I never got to the point of, you know, making a video game. That was long, be or way beyond my understanding and capabilities. But, you know, there was that encouragement of, of making something that was actually useful. And uh, But I never got much further than that with C++, unfortunately. Um, I did C++ in college in the computer science program, which, um, you know, I'll be honest, I liked... I liked the school Swasu, but their computer science program at that time was severely lacking. It, it needed a lot of help. And I was actually debugging the instructor's work and, you know, helping other students out in the assignment where the instructor couldn't, or some of the instructors. I had a really good computer science one and two instructor, and he would often ask for help whenever, you know, he needed it. But, you know, some of the other instructors, you know, they knew me, and they told students if I needed help to come to me, which is kind of interesting. But, um, yeah, I never got much further than that. And so in college, I learned Visual Basic and HTML. So those were two new languages. Well, HTML is not really a language, but it's something that you can do. But uh, it's something else I learned, and I, c I made web pages with it. And so it was something else that I could do that I learned... It's kind of like programming. And so that introduced me to Visual Basic and web development. And I didn't do much with it, but in Visual Basic, I was able to do something rather interesting. I took a picture that was a background, and then I made a sprite in MS Paint. And a sprite is just like some kind of entity in a video game. And so... Basically, what I did was I made a, a little alien ship that you could control, and you could drive it around the screen. And so that was, again, some more encouragement. And one of the instructors that I had in college, 
he saw that I did this and he thought, you know what? You need to learn C sharp and do something productive with this. He didn't think, you know, what I was doing was productive. So, um, I actually learned C sharp by him. Yeah, he encouraged me to learn C sharp, so I did. And so that was another language that I learned was C sharp. And I didn't do much with that either. Um, he employed me for writing a few scripts and some programs, so I got paid to do it. It's kind of like a, a student. It wasn't officially student work, but I was a student. Hey, Redstone. But I was a student doing some work with the programming language that I was learning at the time. So I actually got a little bit of money on the side for doing that. So it was pretty neat. But again, I didn't do much more with that. C Sharp just wasn't my thing. I really didn't care for it that much. So along came Python. And I immediately, I mean, it was just like instantly, I enjoyed Python a lot. It's an easy programming language. It's pretty close to, you know, writing actual words. I mean, you do have symbolism and specific words you have to use, but it's actually a very well-written language. And it does piggyback on C, but you don't have to learn C to learn Python. Python is a great programming language for beginners because of its syntax is very human readable. And so, I've done a lot of really cool things with Python. And in that, I actually... Oh, we're at Bedrock. Here I am talking away. <laughs> I made it to Bedrock. Okay, so I need to go up to Y12. So we're at Y4. So let's... Uh, now I'll go ahead and patch this up. I don't need to be this far down right now. So how far up do I need to go? Let me do this and I'll come back here. So I need to be right here at this level. So, okay. Let me fill all this in. I don't think I have enough dirt, but I'll do what I can here. There you go. Time flies when you're talking about programming. <laughs> okay, let me get back up to Y12, and we'll branch out here a little bit. Oop, there it is, 12. I'll probably fill in some of this with cobblestone just to just to uh, make a floor here. Okay. So Python, yeah, Python is a really good, fantastic language for beginners, for beginners to programming because of its human-readable syntax. And um, I have done some a lot of really neat things with Python. I'll give you some examples in a little bit. But um, before I go there, I also revisited HTML because at this time, CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, came along. And before, in, in doing a web page, you had to do all of your styling page by page. And the thing with CSS is you could do all your styling on one page, and that one page, or all of your other pages, would refer to that page for styling. So you only had to do your styling in one place. And then everywhere else, it would get the styling from your style sheet. So it j it cut down the work of doing websites tremendously. And that also encouraged me to learn the programming language of JavaScript. And that is another really cool language. It's not as human-readable as Python, but it's extremely versatile, extremely portable. And you can do some really cool things whenever you mix it with HTML and CSS. I mean, they go hand in hand, all of them. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And the most notable thing that I've done with those three programming languages is I actually wrote a Sudoku game with um, HTML and CSS for the, the interface where you could see the numbers, you could type it in, you can click and all that stuff. You can take notes, you can erase things, start new. Yeah, I did all of the interface in HTML, so it, it was like a web page. And then I did uh, all of the programming of the game in JavaScript. And so that was really cool. So I can actually say I wrote a video game <laughs> in uh, JavaScript, so it was really cool. I was really excited about that, and um, let's just use that call right now. And so, um, back to Python, 
I've done some really cool things with Python. For instance, I wrote some Python scripts to create websites. And um, that was a tremendous amount of work. But at that time, I was doing a web project that the website that I wanted to build, I was moving it from one platform to another. And this website had, you know, at least 2,000 web pages. It was a huge website. And the platform I was coming from would not let me transport my code out. So it was it was a nightmare. So I decided the best thing to do is to start from scratch. And that takes a long, long time when you're writing HTML files for, you know, 2,000 web pages. So along comes Python. And Python is... It's an incredible language. I, I can't say it enough. I was able with Python to create a script that would generate an HTML file, go out on the web to my existing web platform, copy the code, the HTML code that I wanted, and then bring it, download it to my computer, and then create a new HTML page with that code using a new format that I wanted to work with. And so it was so cool to create this script and then just sit back with one click or one stroke, one keystroke, watch my f watch those files download and then come to my hard drive and then get put into a script and then basically I just created 2000 web pages for a website in a matter of seconds. It was really cool. And so, you know, I've studied Python. I've kind of adopted it as my official programming language. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to start with Python. If I at all possible can do it in Python, that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start in Python. And uh, JavaScript and HTML, CSS, that's another one that I will frequent for certain things. And um, I'm also a Linux user, so Bash is another scripting language that I like to use. But um, enough on that. Let's come back to Minecraft here. Uh, this is what I typically like to do when I branch mine. Is I come down here to Y12, and if you look over here on the uh, kind of the middle left side, you see the XYZ. That number 12, Y12, that's where diamonds and all of the good stuff is going to be most common. Diamonds usually are in groups of four to eight, and they are most common between 12, or sorry, 11 and 16, if I'm not mistaken. I could be a little wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's 11 to 16. And you know, here's redstone. So when you see redstone, you're near diamond. Now, I can't mine this redstone because you need iron, an iron pickaxe to do that. And so I've got some iron smelting up top, and so I'll have to make another pickaxe with that. And basically what I'll, what I'll do here is I've done this in several different ways, so I have not figured out which way works absolutely best for me. Now, the direction we're going here is west, and west is... Let me think. Was that... That's the direction of the island, if I'm not mistaken, where we started. And then east is the direction of the taiga. And that is toward positive x. Let me see. That taiga was in the... Let me look at my paper here. That was in the negative x direction, so I'm backwards here. This way is the direction of the taiga, and this way is the direction of the of that island where we started. So, and at this point, it doesn't matter. It's going to be 50-50. Now, what biome are we in? We're still in the mushroom field. Sure. Okay, so that's something a little different. So that means we're probably underneath water, and eventually we might change biomes any block from now. So, um... Let me go ahead and mark this spot here. Oh, there's iron. Great. I'm just going to go ahead and get started with that right now. So, um, I think what I might do is adopt my original branch mine style here. 
Now let me get this iron and I'll show you what I do. You may have a different branch mining technique that works out for you. And I'd actually... I've got to be patient here. I forgot I have a slow pickaxe. <laughs> and uh, I'd be actually quite interested in hearing what are your methods for branch mining. Here's what I do. I'll pick a direction. And at this point, it's, it's just a toss-up. I had luck going this way. And I'd like to find out if I'm going to reach a new biome going this way. So let's just start going this way a little bit. So what I do is I create, before I created a tunnel that was only two high, I'm going to go three high so that I can get one, two, three, four, five blocks of exposure here vertically. Of a, that's a better chance of getting diamond. So we're going to go this way. And that's andesite right there. So I do need to mine that as well. But let's go this way a little bit. And I'm about in need of placing a torch. There goes that. Are we in... Uh, what's the biome? Ocean. So, monsters can start spawning over here. And there's Lapis Lazuli. And I do need... I do need an iron pickaxe to get that as well. So let's get this other pickaxe. I've got eight iron, so we're, we're, I can go back and get some more iron and get another pickaxe so we can make this go a little bit quicker. But uh, let me get this andesite. I really do need it for the house because I would like to go ahead. You know, I've spent almost enough time here mining, so let me get some more andesite. And then I'll kind of touch on what I'm going to do from here on the branch mining. So whenever we come back to this, uh, you'll see what I'm going to do and you'll know what to expect what I'm going to do whenever I get into the branch mine. And who knows, digging around in this andesite, we might come across some uh, diamond here. That'd be kind of cool. I'd have to go get my uh, iron pickaxe, or go make one, to mine diamond. You can't do that with a stone pickaxe. But let's get a little bit more here of this andesite and find out how much I've got. Okay, how much andesite do I have? Do I have over a stack? There's a stack and some. I would like to get a lot more than that to be comfortable here. So I might end up using this pickaxe to get this andesite. I'd like to come back and get that lapis lazuli. I don't need it, but if I wanted to dye something blue, that would be good. Or if I find a fast way of getting enchantment set up, then of course you'll need lapis lazuli for that. But right now my mission is some andesite here. So that I can get started on the house. Or rebuilding the house. Maybe this episode I can have a good start on rebuilding the house. If not, at least let you see you know, what the design is that I'm going for on the house here. So let's get a little bit more andesite and then I'll check where I am. Okay, let's get some more of this. I've almost got it all, so I'll just go ahead and grab this. That should be the last piece. Okay. Anyhow, back to the branch mine. What I'll do is I'll go this way, basically a very long way. Let's get this iron before my axe runs out. It would be really nice to have some more iron on hand. And then what we'll do, I'll back up here. Let's fill that in. Let's just pretend this is a really long tunnel for, for right now, just for illustration's sake, because my pickaxe is about wore out. What I'll do is I'll come back to the opening of my tunnel, and I'll say one, two, three blocks. And right here, this will be a branch off of this direction. I'll go this way. Oh, there goes my pickaxe. But I'll go that way a long ways. Like, usually what I'll do is I'll say 300 blocks. I'll go that way 300 blocks, just mining like this, 300 blocks. And so what that does is it exposes this much material for getting uh, diamonds. Now, since I, diamonds typically uh, generate in groups of four or eight, like this, it'll be in a little chunk like this, you see, if you miss it going this way, 
then you're not going to need to mine this side because you already know what this block is. So if you go three blocks over, you may not know what this block is. And there's a chance that the diamond will start here or here or here. So it, it just increases your chances of finding diamonds. So that's, that's pretty much how I branch mine. And so, you know, I'm going to be doing that in this series um, because, you know, this, it's really, in my experience, it's the best way of getting a lot of these materials like redstone, which, you know, I don't do a lot of redstone, but, you know, it's a good way of storing up experience or getting experience. And then lapis lazuli, it's good for finding that, iron, coal, and also diamonds. And if you're in an extreme hills or mountain region, um, emeralds. You'll definitely find emeralds down here. Emeralds are, I think, a little bit higher, but only under the mountains. So let's go back up, put this iron that we got in the furnace, and let's get started on polishing this andesite, making stairs, and then uh, getting started with uh, reconstructing this house because uh, I'm ready to build. I haven't done a lot of building in this series. Well, actually, I've done very little, but... I'm ready to get started. So there we go. We've started the branch mine. So that's that's a good step forward here. And while I'm on the way out, let's see if these cows are ready. Yeah, let's let's get some more cows going here. Yeah, I apologize if uh, you know watching me mine is not you know incredibly exciting. I I mean I'll try to have like a a topic you know, to kind of narrate something or to discuss, just to kind of fill in kind of those those dull moments. But again, you know, I want to try to keep this uncut, you know, with the uncut survival going. But, you know, you, the viewer, have the power to sway me either way. If, if I need to just do the mining on my own and just cut that out completely, then let me know. But if you want to see me mine and see how I do all this, then, you know, I am more than happy to to do that. But if you don't want to watch the mining, if you don't want to watch resource gathering, you know, I completely understand, and I want to respect that. I want to create content that you enjoy watching. And so, uh, let me grab... I normally don't like to grab it that soon, but I do need a pickaxe, because I need to take up this cobblestone. And... Whoop, come back over here. Okay, let's take out this stuff here. I'll use these cobblestone stairs for either going down the mine or on the uh, pathway up here, up here, in that spot right there. And then I need my axe. Uh, I put that down over here, I think. It's about wore out, so I might have to make another one, but I'll just go ahead and use it here. We're going to take down all of this wood. And I'm going to need to get some glass. That's another resource that I'll need to collect here in just a little bit. And there goes that. Let's make another axe. Um, I don't think I can make a stone. No, let's... Yeah, let's just go ahead and take it. Uh, let's make a an iron axe here. Like so. I prefer it to stone. Then there's this. And I'm going to leave that cobblestone there. I think it'll be fine. Most of the time you're not going to see it. This is probably one of the only blocks. This block and then under the door over there are the only ones you're going to see. And I'll just fill it in with uh, either stone or um, andesite. Polished andesite. Or diorite. You know, it's possible to to do that. Okay, now... I wanted to change this to spruce. It's a darker wood. I like the darker sp of the darker uh, texture of the or color of the spruce. Sorry for the uh, the mumbling there <laughs> or the stammering. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of these with spruce. And then what I will do from there is I need to make some spruce stairs and then I need to make some spruce slabs. And this floor, I'm going to make a, an adjustment to this floor. I need to take this up because I'm going to have to move it here in a little bit. But I got actually, I got some inspiration for this floor. 
one of my subscribers uh, who goes by the uh, username of Livo Games, and I hope I pronounced that properly. If not, you know, please comment. But Livo Games, he's doing this really cool build in his videos, and I really liked it. And I liked his use of spruce and oak together in the floor of his build. And so he's going to inspire me to to do something like that. And so I'm going to convert. Let me put some of these cobblestones away here. Look, I'm going to convert some of these spruce logs into slabs. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do with those. Uh, let's see. where. Uh, let's just do this. Let's see. How many of these am I going to need? I, I'm going to need quite a bit of planks. So I'll just go ahead and make those. And then let's just make a bunch of slabs. Yeah, that'll give me 60 slabs. That's a good start. Okay. Now what he did was take the spruce and make a border out of it. And so that's what I'm going to do here. So it looks like this. Now that's a really neat texture change to go from the stone to the spruce to the oak. Now, he was, I think, I believe he was using a, an earlier version of Minecraft, 1.13 maybe. And so the spruce is a little different, but still, I like it. So let's go ahead and make this happen here. I might have to take up a little more here to make this, to get to that. Let's see if I can, yep, I got it. Okay, cool. And I can't get it. <laughs> Let's just do it the easy way. There we go. And let's repair my hole. I'll just stick that right there. Let's see if I can mine this without the bed breaking. Yeah, okay, cool. almost done here. Let's finish this up. There we go. So now what that does is that creates a neat visual pattern or visual change in the texture and it just it, it, it's more appealing to be honest. Let's go ahead and sleep. I can't remember how long it's been since I've slept. What was that? Would you believe it? A wandering villager. And he's got two llamas? What? This is so cool. I, I did not expect that. Screenshot. Yes, thank you. That is so cool. <laughs> wow, okay, well, what do you got? Nautilus shell. Cool, I'd like to buy that. Acacia sapling, that's kind of neat. I don't need those. But if you would give me emerald for that... Red tulip, yeah, I'd buy some of those. I don't need pods all, but this is really cool. I don't have any emeralds, but wow, I've got a visitor. Very cool. Let's see if I can get a better screenshot. Like maybe, well, I'll, I'll kind of let him walk around a little bit. But yeah, I'd like to get a better screenshot of that guy. That was really cool. All right. Pardon me, fellas. All right, let's polish some andesite here. And now, let's go... I need the stone cutter. Let's go ahead and put that back in place. Let's just do this here. Okay. I need... There we go. <laughs> That's so cool. Ah! I always forget about that. Again, I did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm distracted because I never expected one of those guys to show up and looky here we've got we've got one awesome here I'm gonna he's gonna be permanently in my house that would be 
interesting, but I'll, I'll leave this open so hopefully he can get out. There. There you go. Go ahead and, yeah, you can go ahead and leave. <laughs> okay, now I need to make some spruce stairs. Let's see. Let's wait for that to come back to spruce. There we go. Um, yeah. Let's just go ahead and make as many as I can out of this. And let's go ahead and... Oh, I don't want that. Here we go. Now he's walking off. Let's see if I can get a better screenshot of him here. Because that would be a really good... Uh, okay, this llama won't sit still. Here we go. Okay. Perfect. Now everybody say cheese. That's the F3. There we go. <laughs> I always do that. When I go to take a screenshot, I hit the F3 button. Okay, that's what I'm wanting to go for here. Let's get this. Let's just go ahead and do this all the way around. That way he doesn't wander back into the house. And then I'll make room for uh, uh, windows here in a little bit. And then, you know, another thing I would like to do is, like, maybe make a place to put that stone cutter. And, um, you know, like a, a shed of some, or something for storing things and then put, like, the stone cutter in there. You know, that way it's not in the house. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. It can stay in the house. Aesthetically, it would be nice to have it in a, a dedicated crafting spot for that purpose. Okay. That's so cool. Okay, moving on. <laughs> now, what I would like to do above these is I'm going to need to make, um, let's get these oak out of here. Uh, let's take some of these. Let's make some planks out of these, spruce planks. And I'm going to put these across the top here. And then one thing I might do is throw in some oak in here for color variation. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just get everything built so that I have a visual of what, what I've got to work with. You know, what, what it's going to look like so I can kind of envision, you know, any color variations I would like to put in there any uh, different blocks or whatever, or any changes I'd like to make. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes when I build something, I'll build it out of, you know, like cobblestone or whatever. Again, it's not the most um, inspiring material, but at least it functions, and I can create a functioning thing, and then from there, I can, um, I can change things. Once I get something built and functioning, and getting it to kind of like the structure that I want, then from there I can go in and um, you know change the blocks to then make it look really good. Um, so let's go ahead. I, I can't remember how many. Yeah, I can go ahead and smelt this stuff. So let's go ahead, take this. Let's go ahead and make some glass here. I do need glass so I can start making windows. And now that I have these up, I will go ahead and make a window here. And I'm thinking about maybe... Um, I can do a window here. Maybe do a window here. I'm going to do a doorway here. So let's go ahead and make that. Okay, a doorway there, and let's do a window here. I'll go out and get that block here in a little bit, and then I think I might leave that for now. And then let's do a window here. All right, let's go out here. That should be, I should be able to, I should have enough glass to fill those in for windows. Now, um, this part here, I typically like to do an overhang for a roof. But again, I'm, I'm trying to envision this here. 
So I might do an overhang across here. And with that, I'll either do upside down stairs or I can do slabs or a combination of the two. Because I do need to put a roof on this thing. And the roof, I'm thinking... I need to decide what style of roof. If I want to do a loft, then I think a, a typical... You know, pitched roof will be good, or a mansard style roof. A mansard style roof comes up at an angle and then flattens off and then comes back down at an angle. I might could do one of those. I mean, if you've seen a witch hut, I believe the roofs of a witch hut are of the style of a mansard roof. There's some uh, building terminology for you. I no longer need those doors, so I'm going to put those away. So let's go ahead and craft some... Let's see, can I make uh, glass panes? Yes. Perfect. Now here's another change to 1.14 that I really liked. Wait, that's not right. That should have... That should have closed off. I don't like that. I guess, am I going to have to do a full block below or the sides? This was un unanticipated here. Let me let me see something here. If I put a solid block underneath, see this didn't happen before. No. Okay. Huh. Let's put the solid block to the side here. This is this is going to ruin my design pattern here, I think. But I was not anticipating this. This did not happen in previous versions. Well, if it did, I'd never noticed it. So, um, okay, we'll, we'll work with this. Let me come back out here. This may not be bad, but again, I might make a change here. Yeah, I'm not sure that I like that. Hmm. Ooh, what I might have to do. Yeah, let's look over here. See, here's here's something that was unexpected that I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to work through here. You know, that doesn't look terrible, but I don't like yeah, I'm not liking the fact that I had to put a solid block there on the sides. That I couldn't use stairs. Hmm. You know, I don't know. It's a good... Mm. So I wonder if underneath the windows I did the stairs, but everywhere else I did a solid block through here, and then did that, then the solid block here. I wonder if... Yeah, see, this isn't going to work here either. Okay. Let's start experimenting. Let's take these up and let me get this here. Let's see what this is going to look like right here. You know, that doesn't look half bad. I'm not opposed to that look there. That looks a little cleaner. I can have my my variations that I like here. Okay, so let's let's go with this here and let's see how it looks going forward. I might be on to something. It's a change that I didn't anticipate, but that happens. So let's let's uh go ahead and continue this this pattern here. Okay. There, now let's get that glass. I really like the new glass in Minecraft. It's clear, you can see out of it. You know, I didn't mind so much all of the, you know, the, the texture of the glass before, but it did obscure it and made it hard to look out in most cases. And so I like the change. I like that you can see out it much more. 
So that's that's a positive right there. I really like the new glass. Okay, so this one I will probably need to do whoop, the solid blocks. Whoop, not like that. But here. And then let's just do that. Here. Oh, wait, yeah, I was going to do the stair under the window. I forgot. There we go. You know, yeah, that doesn't look half bad. I kind of like it. I've never done anything like that before, but I like it. So this is what I'm going with here. I like it. Don't step on the on that stuff there. So I need to change out this and this. Replace it with this. And then you change this and this. Replace it like that. There we go. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'm, I'm, I like where we're going here. Now this here, the door. So since this is next to a window, okay, I, I'm gonna have to do it like this. Okay. I was just thinking out loud there. I do a lot of thinking out loud. So if it sounds like I'm rambling, I'm probably thinking out loud, and I apologize. It's just what I do. That's part of what makes me me. <laughs> All right, there we go. Whoop! <laughs> no one opened the chest. And I might end up making a, a window here eventually, but not right now. I think I think what I've got so far is good. Okay, there we go. Great. I, okay, I'm I'm pleased now. I'm very pleased. Now, but the thing is, you see, this does look rather boxy. Although I do have some of this, you know, the, I guess what could you call it, dimension to it. It's still a little blocky. So I need to, I need to change that. So how can I change that? Let's go ahead and polish this diorite. And do I have any more? Yeah, let's go ahead and polish all this diorite. I have an idea that I would like to try. I don't want a block of iron. Uh, where's the polished diorite? Right there. Now, I had the thought of putting polished diorite on top of these. Now, this could be a mistake. As like a, uh, a topper. I don't know. Because I do need to make a roof here. Hmm. Let's give this some thought. Sometimes I'll use stone or a, uh, a log as a topper. Or a wooden slab as a topper. Which, you know, we can use polished diorite as a slab on top of these. Whoop. Ah, that was a waste. Let me put the glass up so I don't do that again. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, l let me let me t um, step away from that for just a moment. Now, look at the texture changes here and the color changes. This floor, in my opinion, looks really good. So... The floor where I got my inspiration from uh, Livo Games. I thank you for for sharing your video and doing that floor like that. I really like it. It has inspired me, and this looks really good. How you transition from this to this to this. I like the color change. I really do. Now, not everybody's going to hold my opinion on that, but I really like that. And so, um, okay, let's do this. I have an idea. I need spruce logs. Let's create a center beam here. Let's start with that. It's something to begin with here. I need to get up on the roof here for this. And then I usually like to do dirt to start one of these. What I'll do... That right there. Okay, let's do a beam. And I'll get that later. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across here. I'm going to create a central beam here. Let's just start with this. Maybe this will kind of point me in the right direction of uh, inspiration here. Okay, let's look at this outside. Okay, we're on to something, I think. Now, should I do the same thing here and there to kind of tie in these three? It would create this darkness here, but what I can do is I can put stairs across the front here, and that will create kind of a soffit or an overhang of the roof here. And then from there, I could probably do a, a couple of slabs to kind of make it extend out a little further. Or, hmm, okay. Let's do this. I can always undo it. Let me hop back up here. Oop, I want dirt. Let's go ahead and see how it looks like this. Let's go ahead and do it and see how it looks. I'm probably going to need... Let me jump down here and get some more logs. I have a feeling I'm going to need more. So I'll have them ready to go. I'm not going to need the oak right now. So let's just go ahead and place these. And we'll just experiment here and see how this looks. So this may look really good. And then I may be onto something here. And then this will inspire me to build up and to get a roof going. All right, there. All right, let's take down the dirt here. Close the door and let's see what this looks like. Okay, hmm. What to do across the front here? Hmm. All right, I may have to walk away from this project and come back to it. Let's look at it around here. Okay. What do you guys think? Feel free to put in the comment what you think of how this is looking so far. Right now, it looks like a box, but I want to change that. I want to add dimension to it. More dimension that there, than there is. I think, we're, I think I'm on the right path here. I'm on the right track of getting, getting something going here. I think, I think I like where it's going so far. But I'm almost under the suspicion that I might put a change of block above these planks here on this side and that side but I'm thinking it won't be seen so I don't think it's gonna matter what block I use there let me hop up here yeah I wonder if I take the logs across here if that would be too much. Because you're probably not going to see it from the outside. You'll see it from the inside. Uh, no. <laughs> there. You'll see it on this side. So, I, okay, let's do that. Let's go this way. And this one, too. Like that. Okay. Okay. Now, we're getting there. We're going up. Now, I need to come out. How am I going to do that? Um, the... Hmm. A porch covering. Which means I'll probably need to move the fire eventually. I'll probably move it out that way. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Hmm. I could do a row of slabs across here. Or a row of stairs, but you wouldn't see that. But what I could do is do the stairs across the middle 
and then do slabs across the top here to kind of give it a design. Hmm. <laughs> this is tough decisions to make here. And again, I've not done this in creative mode. And normally what I would do is I would go into creative mode and just start throwing a bunch of blocks together just to see what happens. But with this series, I'm, I want to try to do things differently. So, um, okay. Let's see how this looks. Uh, let's put that up there so I can hop up here. Let's see what I can do with this. Let's kind of build this up into a uh, an almost pyramid kind of thing here. Go up to that point right there. Okay, see, this is tall enough here for a loft in this area here. So that's in the right direction. That's what I want so far. Let's come out here. Okay, that does not look great. So I do need a change somewhere. So I'm going up, but I'm still flat. All right, so I think what's going to have to happen is I think I'm going to have to leave this alone for now. I want to keep going, but I'm, I'm reaching my one-hour mark here. And so... What I might do is I might spend the next week, the, the time between now and the next episode, to think about what I want to do. And if you have any suggestions, uh, please go ahead and put it in the comments. I would be more than happy to hear what you have to say about this, how it's, how it's going so far, what you think of the series and whatnot. And, um, yeah, where, what kind of direction should I go with this house? What I might have to do is look at some of the other houses that I've built in the porches just to see if there's any inspiration that I could get from that. You know, there is something that I could do to add just a little bit of dimension here. Oh, I forgot to do this. There. <laughs> Let's just, oh, not an axe, pickaxe. Let's go ahead and clean this up really quick. I forgot to finish this side. And do I have polished? Yes, I do, right there. Polished andesite. There, okay. And let's go ahead and clean that up. All right, there we go. I might put a window here just to kind of open that up a little bit. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, I need I need inspiration. So I think I'm going to have to walk away from this. When I come back next time, hopefully, I will have an idea of what to do here. Because this is looking like just a lot of wood. And I would like to include stone. Now, I mentioned wanting stone for for the roof. And so that's still definitely on the table, but I would like to know where I could put that stone on the roof. Okay, let's not dwell on this right now because I do need to move forward and I do need to wrap up this episode so that way I don't go too long here. But okay, we're, we've, we're on the right direction here. We've got something going and we expanded the wheat patch and it looks like there's more good wheat coming in. Looks like I could expand the sugar cane, so that comes up. Uh, that we'll we'll do that later. We got ourselves a companion. I don't know how long he'll hang around, but yeah, there is a wandering villager. I never thought one would come here, but here he is. We have one, and he's got two llamas at that. That's pretty cool. Our uh, cow population is expanding, so we're about ready to start harvesting some of those guys for leather and steak. And so we got a, got started on a strip mine, and so we're, we're moving in the right direction here. Everything is going exactly where we need for it to go. 
uh, this the series is moving along nicely. I like the progress. I hope you do too. Please feel free to share your feedback on this. And so uh, next episode, let's get to work on this. Let's uh, expand this a little bit. I have a couple of ideas already to put like shutters on the windows here with uh, spruce trap doors. That might be a neat little touch to add there. But again, let's. I'm gonna wait till I get some more inspiration. But yeah, let's let's finish this roof in the next episode. And so um, I think right there is a good point to to come to a stop and wrap up the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. If you did, please feel free to tap or click that like button to show your support, to show you liked the episode, and then that'll show others that you enjoyed it and maybe they'll enjoy it too. Um, and I hope to see you in the next episode and I hope to see you at the premiere. Uh, again, I'm really enjoying the premiere. I want to continue to do the premieres. It's, it's a fun experience for me and I would like to see some more participation, so hopefully that'll happen. But um, until next time, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.